There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. Of course, I am Jay Campbell and you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my StreamYard super duper enhanced virtual studio with dr peter martone peter what is up my brother you know just living the dream i'm uh after this gonna go take a nap get ready for my mountain bike ride tonight and sleep like shit tonight because my heart rate's gonna be too high but <laughs> <laughs> there we go. that's awesome well welcome to the show and uh peter and i were talking off air and he is definitely a jay campbell audience <laughs> uh member if not he will become one after today so you guys are gonna love this conversation uh, I'll give you guys his very advanced bio. He is a chiropractor for better sleep. By the way, I was going to ask you, are you literally wearing pajamas right now? Absolutely. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. That's the brand, yes. baby. Peter, Peter is, is the man. Um, so he is going to talk about all sorts of stuff today about how you guys can improve your sleep. And, and truthfully, sleep is a huge, huge critical component of life, which you know I speak about all the time. I travel so much. My wife and I are all into like, you know, not wearables because I, I'm sure you're going to shit all over those things, but you know, just pillows and making sure that you sleep in a quality hotel that has the right type of, uh, you know, mattress and frame. I mean, it's so difficult, especially when you're not traveling to places where, you know, you can get like a four or five star hotel. And sometimes that's happening. But, um, as I've been doing on the podcast in 2024, and by the way, today for the record is April 23rd. Tuesday, Peter somehow got me to not be in my normal Thursday studio because he's such a cool dude. Uh, but I like to ask my guests now, because again, as you and I were talking off air, it's such a dynamic, ever-changing world that we live in right now. Um, what are your thoughts on humanity right now? Like, are you from like, say just the next five to seven to 10 years, are you a buyer or a seller? A buyer or a seller? Well, first thing is, is uh, you can't, you, you, Jesus. Uh, all right, you're asking a freaking very complex thinker about like a, a that's like simplicity on the far side of complexity. So I just, told you you were gonna have a good time here, man. All right, let me just put it this way: if you choose to accept your reality of where we are based on where you are, then then I I am who I am. But if I choose to make a difference and I choose to want to be able to let's say help the world get way better sleep, nobody wants sleep. Sleep is so freaking boring. Nobody wants to waste nine hours in bed while they sit, while they lay there. So it's such a waste of time. But you do want, you have to sell who you're becoming, right? Mm -hmm. So if I want to become healthy and become different in, in the future, I want to be able to lead a group of people towards that direction. I'm just going to be doing that from the bed. So I'm a seller um, because I want to sell a better life. I want to sell, I want to take humanity from this bullshit that we came out of with this whole COVID thing, get people to really think totally different so that they're more empowered tomorrow when that same shit's gonna happen because it, it is gonna happen. And it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. So if you can empower yourself, empowered people are not controlled. So I wanna be a seller of information that transforms our future. If maybe that is, if that's a good answer. Yeah, that's actually the best answer, probably. I mean, I've asked that question to at least 20 people plus this year. And that's the best answer I've ever got because you actually inverted the answer because, you know, normally will people if, with your viewpoint would say, I'm a buyer, I believe in humanity. But you're actually saying, no, no, I want people to sell. I'm a seller because I want people to actually become empowered. That's awesome, dude. Real, well, you spun that well. I mean, I'm total in agreement. Um, the scamdemic, as we like to call it around here, is absolutely never going away. You know, that was the, the first, as they say, that was the first card in the 
uh, three card money game, right? So it's like, there'll be stages to come. And the only way that you can be ready and really truthfully overcome it is to be prepared and to be empowered. And, and that's where we find ourselves. So I like to say now that society is essentially diverging or bifurcating in empowered, sovereign, and free, which you just described, and then victimhood. Not my fault. Somebody else did it. I was born into poverty, whatever. Right. So it's like you, you have a choice based on your actions uh, and who you hang out with. Right. We all know that your, you know, your network is based on your four or five closest friends uh, to, to overcome whatever comes. And as you just said, dude, it's coming. We just don't know when that was the beginning. All right. Let's talk about sleep, man. Um, I, let me just give you my situation before we get into your bullet points. Um, so I sleep and you, you know, if you need to destroy this, please, feel free. Don't, you know, I don't want to, I, you, you have free reign here, but my wife and I sleep on an eight sleep mattress. Uh, we've been sleeping on the eight sleep mattress for probably about four years. Uh, I like to sleep like a bear. I, I literally have it at like whatever the lowest temperature setting is by 45 minutes into my sleep. You know, I go to bed. I try to go to bed. Try is the operative word by about 10. My wife is always asleep by 945, but usually sometimes I'm in here and creating and stuff. And so I'll get to bed at 10 30, 10 45. But by the time I'm in bed, dude, it's cold. So I'm laying down and I'm literally solid asleep. Right. And then obviously I do use the metrics. You know, I don't wear an aura ring. I used to, but ever since I started sleeping on the mattress, I stopped. But I, I do look at my sleep metrics, you know, on my phone from that um, technology. But I'll just say, like I said, and again, I say this all over and I never stop. If I can't sleep, bro, six to seven hours a night soundly, um, I'm pretty much not the guy that I can be, literally, right? So sleep is critically, critically important. But I mean, what are your thoughts on uh, that device? And, and really just, I know there's others, but you know, what are your thoughts on that kind of tech for people sleeping? Because I know you're going to get a lot of people out there today that talk about the Wi-Fi signal. The EMF is coming out of it, blah, blah, blah. But I'm, I'm interested. You're a sleep expert. What are your thoughts on that? I think, first off, we're asking the wrong question. We're asking, like, downstream questions. So okay. what we got to do is we got to back everything in. So picture this. The constant force that's working on your body the entire time, every day, day in, day gravity. out, is gravity, right? Yeah. And so your structure is an adaptation to that gravity neurologically. So yep. first thing we have to do is we need to put people into avatars. And I pretty much know yours already. So yeah. so before I speak to you, I'm going to evaluate your avatar, okay? Sure. So do me a, a favor. You have a camera. Point to your camera. All right? Okay. So make a circle. Look at me through that circle through your in your camera. Real small. Okay. Real small circle. Real small. Smaller than that. Like this. And then bring that back to your eye. Okay, so you're looking at me with your right eye. Good. Okay, yep. put your hands down. Good. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. Uh, are you left-footed or right-footed? I'm equal. I'm ambidextrous. Okay. So that cross-dominant neurology typically needs to sleep a very specific way. Usually high-functioning, high ADD, very quick brain that goes. So now when you look at, I, I, I classify people into, let's say, animals, right? So you either have the, the bear, you have the the um, Adirondack, you know, like that, that little thing that curls up into a ball, the armadillo, or then you have the ostrich that sticks his head in the ground to feel safe. So most people, when they That's sleep, awesome. the conscious brain, they call it the sleep, the sleep triune. You have the conscious brain, the subconscious brain, and the body. The conscious brain thinks it just wants to feel comfortable, right? The subconscious brain needs to feel safe, and the body wants alignment. So we, we reverse that whole triune. So what happens is the conscious brain mistakes safety for comfort. So somebody like you with your physiology usually typically needs to be like an armadillo. Usually they either use to, need to put pressure on their head to feel safe or they need to curl up in a ball. That also, that temperature needs to drop very quickly. A person with your physiology, the temperature typically stays a little higher. So I don't mind using something to bring down your temperature. But then there's something that's called allostatic load. Allostatic right. load is a hierarchy of systems that will shut down in lieu of stress. So you really want your body's core temperature to equalize on its own. You don't want the bed doing it. 
because then it's going to fight to keep the core temperature elevated, suppressing immune system, digestive system, or reproductive system while you sleep. Now, if you want to cool your body's core temperature, then shut that thing off. That's fine. But you don't want to, it, it can only cool to about midnight, then that thing should be shut off because you don't want to fight allostatic load throughout the night where the body is going to have to fight to keep its core temperature high. But in order to get to deep sleep, it needs to drop within that first third of the sleep cycle. But I don't, I, I like to address the situation of safety and then bringing down the heart rate with breath and then figuring out why an elevated core temperature is high uh, before we get into all these other beds that do different things. What, how, what do you define as an elevated core temperature? An elevated core temperature is a, core, a, a temperature that stays high. So a, a, a temperature should drop one to two degrees in order to get into deep sleep. And right. that follows typically respiratory rate and that follows heart rate. So as right. long as your heart rate's dropping quickly and your respiratory rate's dropping quickly, your temperature is going to drop. If you have food in your system, you have some stimulant after noon, you know, your body's detoxifying at, you know, one to two o'clock in the morning, that will elevate core temperature. So there are, there are different reasons why core temperatures elevate, why people wake up differently in the middle of the night. But, but really, ultimately, the core temperature should be able to drop on its own. Tonight, I will use something because, like I said, I'm going to sleep like shit because, yeah. my, because I'm going to exercise too late. Yeah. And, and, and when you say uh, exercise too late, the majority of humanity, I shouldn't say humanity, the majority of people that exercise, which is a small percentage of humanity, usually exercises probably, you know, when they get off work, right? Like they're, they're training between what, 5.30 and 8.30. So is that usually then the average person, the average gym bro, is that bad at that hour to be exercising? Okay, that's great. Sorry, I, I should re, I should, um, it all depends on what your heart rate is and for how long your heart rate stays elevated at that okay. level. So okay. I'm going to be exercising at more than likely a max heart rate at between 80 and 90% for two hours. So it's, sure. it's, that's too extreme to be able to get a good night's sleep. But at what time are you going to be doing that too? Just okay, so I can good. have a so timeline. I'll start uh, from four to six is, is the time frame that we're going to be doing it. And, and I'll be I'll be toast because my my temper my temperature won't drop until about two o'clock in the morning. Got it. Okay, so I, okay, so I see it. And this is what you're doing, like some sort of like interval training session every, or something. Uh, every uh, I'm I'm a big mountain biker, so we're, oh, we're mountain biker nights. Nice. So you know, really extreme stuff to scratch that ADD itch to to <laughs> stimulate my own brain. And the only and the only one of the only um, organs that metabolizes cortisol is your heart. So right, I don't. Right exercise like that. I'm a freaking maniac. Yeah, it's horrible. You don't want to be around me. I don't want to be around myself. Is that, but is that in uh do you do that in like a controlled setting or are you doing outdoor Outdoor, extreme, extreme jumping rivers? Okay. So you're insane pretty much. How old are you? 51. So, okay. So you're two years younger than me. So you're definitely insane. Cause I quit all that adrenaline junkie bullshit when I was in my early forties, but that's awesome that you're still crazy enough to do it. Have you hurt yourself yet? Oh, Jesus. That, that just broke. There's, <laughs> I had a seat come, oh, come, come out my, my seat post broke, came out the inside of my thigh, thigh came out the other side. I shattered this arm in a multiple different. Dude, places. what about your wife, man? Tell me you're still married. Oh yeah. Thank God. Thank God. Or I would be, Did she, I mean, doesn't she, but doesn't she say, if you don't stop, I'm going to leave you. We don't, we don't talk about that. Okay. We don't talk about that. She's like the next call. Here, man, you and me, dude, we got to be to your mother. Don't make it to me. So, so, but, so I, I will do this on a, on a Tuesday night. So I know that I'll be able to make that up. How many kids do you have, my bro? Two, two. That's awesome. How old are they? Uh, I got a, a daughter is 19. She's in uh, college. And then my other daughter is uh, a junior. That's awesome. So I, I have two daughters too. I, I have five, but just two biologicals. And my daughter's 16 and the other one's 14. So just a little bit younger, but dude, that's crazy that you're still going, man. I mean, wow. Good for you, man. Hopefully you don't die. You know, whenever my good friends like you say this stuff to me, I'm always I like, get it. I've had my best friend die right in front of me in a tragic accident. And, and this is, yeah, this is like right after I had my first child, it was, and then, then I broke, then I shattered my arm and the seat bro. I mean, it's been a, it's been a long road, but you know, I am who I am. 
Yeah, it's your joy, man. It's your joy. No, I mean, it's your joy. And every human should live with purpose like that. And if that's what you find joy and purpose, I mean, you, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I just joke because I have so many friends like you. But I, I honestly, you know, truth be told, just so you know, I don't use any stimulants. This is just, you know, obviously I do use therapeutic testosterone, but I mean, I'm very, very high energy, very high vibration, dude. Um, no caffeine, no coffee. Um, you know, every now and then I'll take uh, a nootropic peptide, but I don't use, you know, anything. So for me, it's pretty easy to go to sleep at night. Um, but, I, you know, I find this fascinating because like, I really want to understand like the maximum heart rate and then the time, you know, that should, you know, settle in between before people go to sleep. Cause as you know, I mean, you're the sleep expert, but the average guy comes home, you know, watches TV after exercise, if they do exercise, watches TV and then eats a giant boatload of food and goes to bed, you know, an hour after or 90 minutes after they've eaten and they've got all this food in their digestive tract and you, you know what happens next. Yeah. You know, the average person, um, it, well, the, the, nobody, I, I freaking hate average, right? So, yeah, exactly. you know, average is really the, the, the you know, you, if you live in the United States, which I do, you know, we rank 50th of the 50th healthiest countries in the world. And that's based on life expectancy. And then, and that's based driven by your actions and your, and your product of your beliefs are what drive your actions. So if you're listening to people around you, you are a product of that. And so your fathers, your brothers, your preachers and teachers, what they're telling you no. is healthy. They still rank 50th. So it's dead wrong. So if you're listening to anybody just look at them and do you want to take your advice? That's right. You know, that's, that's right. All right. So when we look at sleep, let's break down sleep. The reason why people don't get good sleep is really for three reasons. First, the body is in pain when it sleeps. So then you'll toss and turn. The body doesn't feel safe you, or you can't temperature regulate effectively. Those are the three things that are going to destroy your quality of sleep. And the biggest one out of all of those is pain. So pain is what the why the average person will toss and turn 20 to 30 times a night and you're in pain because your body is mistaking comfort for safety and you're sleeping on your side curled up in a ball so the first thing we want to do is we want to recognize and balance the trying we need to understand that the body wants safety to sleep i mean sorry the, the subconscious brain wants safety but the body wants alignment so we have to start with alignment first because you want to put your body into a position where you can reverse the damaging effect and realign the body by taking advantage of that eight hours you're spending at night while you're sleeping to transform your body's structure. So you start with alignment. But when you start with that alignment, the problem is, is it's unsafe for the subconscious brain. And because most of us are constricted in the forward, forward plane, where we have forward head posture, right? Because we're on our right. cell phones, we're on computers. When you take that physiology, remember we talked about gravity, and yeah. then you bring it back, people feel like they're going to fall backwards. So right. Anybody that has knee issues, plantar fasci fasciitis, you have Achilles issues, you're just constricted in the forward plane because of forward head posture. So when I put you into this position structurally, it's an unsafe feeling. And especially for you that has ADD, what you're going to notice is that, or just a brain that goes a million miles a minute, that yeah. you're going to want to use pressure on your chest, pressure over your forehead, so that you can create a safe environment in an aligned position. Then the final thing you do, then you deal with core temperature, getting out of your own head and dropping your heart rate. So you start with alignment, you create safety within the parasympathetic nervous system, and then you work on the brain to be able to drop the body score temperature. So just so you know, bro, I meditate an hour a day. So my drunk monkey is harnessed and controlled. <laughs> I, so, I'm just high energy when I talk to people. So this is great. That's great. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do for you is something that helped me. I love you. I love you. Listen, I'm speaking to me. I, I get it. I trust me. I get it. Yeah, no, I know. I just want you to know that like all those things that you are uh, quantifying me as, that was once me. I'm now the improved me. I, and I love you. I can see you. The hair's <laughs> nicer. I mean, the skin's beautiful. The smile, it's a award-winning smile. I mean, you Thank got you, my nice friend. teeth. So, so right here, all you're going to do when you meditate, every single time you meditate, you're just going to take a scent. I don't even care what the scent is. Just put it under your nose. 
And then when you go to bed, all you're going to have to do is just put that sense down to your nose and put it on your pillow. That's it. Every time you. So that so that, that gets rid of the cortisol. Well, I, I had a question about the safety oh, thing. The so how much of that is? Yeah, how much of that is actually latent trauma from our you know uh, you know our progenitors or even our transgenerational people who did who didn't ever have safety when they went to sleep, right? So some of that could be in the cells, right? Well, so let let's let's talk about. The safety subconscious, right? So that's your, yeah. that's your programming. That is right. also um, how you internalize. Most of your internalization of your thought patterns happen or were developed by five years old. So a lot of the neurology and patterns are stemming way back. Sure. This, right. I really don't yeah. want to dive into this neurology, but a lot of that stuff comes from when you were a kid. So the feeling of safety is subconscious. And, sure. and, you know, you think about like the gorilla, the, the, the silverback gorilla has no, has no um, predators, right? So right. it could just freaking fall asleep like this. Humans, even back in the day, we had predators and, you know, we were, we were yeah. prey. So, so there's a pre- subconscious protective feeling that, you know, like if you think that somebody's going to, like, if you go to sleep in a hotel room, like when you travel that first night, a lot of us can't sleep. Because we're in an unfamiliar surroundings that subconsciously it's a, it's a difficult place for us to be. Right. Yeah. So you don't feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's interesting. And, and then, you know, that obviously you said the neurology goes back to like when you're five and like what happens to you as a, as a child. So if you're traumatized or you get abused physically, psychologically or whatever, that also has to do. And then obviously the fear patterning though, too, of, you know, are you, you know, I like to say, are you in resonance or dissonance, but you know, people that are in fear, um, of everything life, it's even probably harder for them because like you said, you know, just the idea of laying their head down and, and sleeping, there's some sort of overwhelming thought pattern that's making them think or overthink or be stimulated that, you know, they got to handle something or they can't handle this, or they've got this bill to pay or that to pay. And so it affects the mind when they lay down, because I mean, you see so many people are so riddled with anxiety in today's world for Christ's sakes, dude. Like I'm sure it's the same in Boston as it is in Florida. I live in Tampa, by the way, I didn't tell you that, but I can't go out in public and not look at around, you know, in a car next to me and seeing people vape. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen. There are so many people vaping, you know what I mean? And I know that's due to anxiety. You can watch their way they communicate or way they talk. It's like they're so riddled with anxiety that they vape. I'm sure a lot of people smoke weed too. So yeah, yeah. It like so. Let's unpack that a little bit. So ultimately, when 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 we're looking at so there, there's a difference between thinking it and remembering. So you sure. can't think yourself to sleep. You can't be in your conscious brain putting yeah. yourself to sleep. Yeah. You need to remember yourself to sleep. So that's why it's very. It, it, you can be in control of one or the other but not both at the same time. But if you focus on remembering, you'll put yourself to sleep. Well, what does that do physiologically within the body? That physiologically is changing the two nervous systems that are at play. You're the sympathetic dominant or your parasympathetic dominant. So there's a dance between the two. The problem becomes this. And this is what didn't exist. And it took me a lot of understanding of sleep and sleep dynamics to come up with this one specific friggin' principle. And, and, and it's, it's really amazing. So when you look at the structure of the cervical spine, if you lose the structure, you compress that nerve right behind me called your vagus nerve, which is right. 80% of sim- parasympathetic tone. So just by this loss of structure of your cervical spine, you are increasing, you're decreasing parasympathetic stimulation. So you have a, a relative sympathetic dominant state over a long period of time. A relative dominant sympathetic state is going to give you higher cortisol, which then stimulates an anxious state. So you have driven anxiety just based on your loss of cervical structure, which is 80 to 90% of our population. So that's really what I'm trying to transform is, that's awesome. is getting people to see what I've seen chiropractically over, well, now 24 years, but when I started with this 15 years, and then tra- just changing your positioning while you sleep to decrease anxiety. We're working with a, a college right now 
to do this for the kids in uh, at college. Just physically to increase, gra improve grades, decrease anxiety, change the way you sleep, put alignment first, then improve the structure, then work on that parasympathetic uh, stimulation. By the way, do you still adjust people or no? Three days a week, yeah. Very cool. Are you just staying on I've been I've been seeing a chiropractor for 28 years. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's so important because yeah. I'm a scientist and I still love the test theories and, and, and yeah. stuff like that. Well, I mean, I I mean it's crazy how many people, you know, because you just said 80 to 90 percent of people. I'm still blown away at the number of people that don't understand the importance of their structure. You know, the the, the importance of proper anatomy you know, shoulders, back. I mean, it's just, I mean, again, my wife and I are really masters of body language, reading it, seeing it, assessing it. And, you know, whenever we see people that, you know, have really poor posture, you know, you see it a lot in children. And again, it's, it's, it's obviously a, um, an emotional issue or an insecurity issue or whatever, you know, girls have that phase, you know, where they have like quote unquote ugly duckling phase where they don't feel comfortable in their own body. They're long and lanky or whatever. I know you I'm sure daughters went through it, but it's just interesting how, as we get older, people don't really, unless they meet people like you or me, they don't really understand the importance of, of regular, you know, alignment and spinal checkups and just, just being adjusted, you know, especially if you're somebody who's like you, who's a maniac who, you know, goes up and down cliffs on bikes at 35 miles an hour. <laughs> that's I mean, one literally. of the things I do, but that's fine. Oh, you have, you, have, you have a bunch of other crazy things that you do. You got to tell me about. Well, I mean, for me now, dude, it's just lifting. You know, at one time I wasn't an adrenaline junkie like you. I did play professional basketball. I played, you know, in college and stuff like that too. So, I mean, there was a lot of pounding, running, jumping. I could jump really high. Um, but I don't know. I just, in my early forties, I was like, you know what? I like my body. <laughs> I want to continue to remain upright and not have aches and pains when I get out of bed every day. So I stopped being a crazy person. But for me now, it's just literally training. Uh, and that, you know, I still train intensely, but obviously I don't train with like ex ex extreme load on my spine or anything like that. Um, what is your thoughts? Cause I love asking chiropractors who are very knowledgeable. Like you said, you're a scientist really like, what are your thoughts on people over the age of 40 squatting? Yeah, I'm not a big fan. So you're right. getting, you're getting the, you know, you're getting the stimulation of your largest muscle group. Right. And then people love that you know, that testosterone, you know, the HGH effect that you get. But really, when it comes down to it, it's there's so there are way more, there are way better things that you can do yes. to stimulate that stuff than put your entire spine under load like that. Now, if you have a great spine and the structure is good and you have great joints, well, then you put it under load and, and as long as you maintain it, that's fine. That is not people. I mean, most people right. are failing biomechanics as totally. they progress through life. And you, you, all you're doing is putting that under load and that's conventional. Dude, I'm a hundred percent agreement with you. I'm sure you say the same thing about a deadlift too, right? Same thing. Yeah. Body posture, adjust the head position. Most people have psoas major muscle constriction yeah. through their abdomen, which is weakening the disc. You put all of that stuff under load. It's eventually it's, it's going to fail. I'm never, it's, it's crazy. I'm, I'm, dude, I'm, we, we, we're, we're speaking from the same hymnal. I, I, I cannot advocate anyone over the age of 40, you know, doing anything like even with like a Smith machine. And like you said, you know, if you're ana anatomically and biomechanically aligned the right way, right? Like you're in good condition. You don't have a lot of fat. You're not forward protruding uh, uh, lean or all those things, you know, lordosis, all that stuff. You can probably do like body weight. I mean, you could even just do, as you know, body weight, you know, uh, lowering and, and, or sumos or even without weight, you know, which is so much more effective than getting into that, that fixed tell, position. Tell me what the benefit is in the application of, None. what are you going to put a, a swagging bug on your back and walk around? None. No, oh. it's insane. Ridiculous. It's, it's, it's insane. I mean, I mean, I, I see, you know, when, when you see guys that are still competing in strongman competitions, which is a high risk endeavor too, you know, similar to you running down a mountain at 35 or 40 miles an hour. But other than that, there's, there's zero value. I mean, I mean, and, and there's, and, and really truthfully, I'm glad we're talking about this. There's no value to your physique. It's not going, it's not an effective way to build muscle. So my undergrad degree, I'm an exercise physiologist, right? Of course you are. I was a professional trainer. That was kind of my jam. How did I know? 
So I get, I'm very opinionated on this stuff. So. I love it, man. I had no idea, by the way, that you were, but I can, I knew you were knowledgeable. That's why I wanted to go down this path with you. So continue. Yeah. So when you, so when you look at, when you look at the body, it, most people believe that the shock absorbers in your spine are the discs. That is not the case. Right. It is the curves within your spine are the shock absorbers, like a spring. Right. So, so now when you eat, when you put the body under load and you and you create new muscle, yeah, that causes scar tissue. Right. Scar tissue fascial adhesions, yes. The last less elastic than normal tissue. So the body's adaptation to support any time, and I want to I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna say this over and over. This is a frigging law. It is not like, oh my god, I made this up. This is a law. The body's adaptation to lack of movement is atrophy. So right. anytime you support something in the body, if you don't use it, you lose it. You put a cast on, you're going to make the arm weaker. More right. arch support, you're going to make the foot weaker. A back support, you're going to make the back weaker. Anytime you do that posture support, you're weakening right. the body, whether it's right. supplements or whatever it is. So if we know that this increased load to our joints causes scar, causes scar tissue, and you right. can't stretch it out, you can't massage it out, then over a period of time, you're going to lose motion, you're going to dehydrate the discs, the di the, you're going to pull the fluid out because the body is not going to use the joint, it's going to dehydrate it and use the, right. body, blood, uh, the, the, um, the water somewhere else. That puts your joint at risk. So then when you put it under load, might be good the first 20, 30, 40 times, but there's going to be one time when you do it that, that you're going you're gonna to tear something. So, awesome answer. Um, what do you think about the synovial fluid in the discs at the age? Because you, you just started talking about dehydration and, and you know, lack of fluid and stuff like that. Like, at what age is it that there's none? I, I shouldn't say there's none, but there's such a small amount. Okay, perfect. I love this. That is never. I had this conversation with Dr. Mercola, and I had to go over this, this, the entire understanding. Sure. Because we need to back into this. For okay. a joint to dehydrate, that is not a normal function. That is not normal. It's adapt. So the body doesn't make mistakes. One of our core principles, so I have this whole uh, neurostructural protocol within this Way Better Sleep program, and we have very specific principles. Principle number one is the body doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. It adapts to stress. So the, one of the adaptation to lack of movement is pulling the synovial, the synovial fluid out of the joint. Because I, I have one, my oldest patient's 104 years old. And That's awesome. some discs that are still beautiful. Others are not, but she started with me when she was 80, right? So, that's awesome. But she's dancing still. I mean, that's, that's the essence of life. Now I have yeah. another woman that just came into me who's 67 years old. It's one of the worst spines I've ever seen in my life, right? Yeah. And so it's all adaptation to something. So that's yes. why I can look at an x-ray. I can backtrack to almost within the year when you were injured at four or five years old because it's very character degeneration and atrophy sure. and loss of synovial fluid is adaptation to a lack of movement, which is scar tissue which usually cause from an injury or repetitive motion. Peter, I fucking love you, bro. I'm sorry. I, I yell. I too. Cause no, 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 no. I mean, like I, I, you just broke down a very complex topic, uh, in a very engaging and very, very understandable way. You're kind of like me in that, but I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, you know, we're not talking about bodybuilding and lifting and building muscle, but obviously I have a lot of people in my audience that love that kind of stuff. And we just pretty much told them like, don't squat if you're over 40. <laughs> yeah. Or, or have you joined, have a rate. So I have, I have weight lifters. I have, you know, heavy weight lifters have a plan in place or a yeah. team in place yeah. to work on you. You know what I mean? Yeah. That knows what yeah. the, more importantly knows what the hell they're doing because I've worked with some of the top people, you know, in our space. Yeah. And let me tell you something, they're falling apart just as much as you know, everybody else, everybody yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of your points, which I can I think it's kind of understood, you know, if you want to go deeper, you can, we can talk about the, the hidden link between sleep and chronic disease. 
I mean, I, you know, I'm very aware of like metabolic dysregulation, um, you know, insulin resistance, high levels of inflammation, high levels of visceral fat. I mean, is there beyond that? I mean, I mean, you, you kind of already said pain, you know, obviously when you're fat, when you're obese, when you're metabolically deranged, whatever you want to call it, you have obviously cytokine storms, you know, going through the body at all different times. So, I mean, like it's very difficult for them to sleep, but you know, is there anything else you want to add, you know, into that kind of criteria? Can you rephrase the question so I can understand it? Yeah, just basically like the difference, the the, the, the link between dis-ease okay. and lack of sleep and, okay. and, and how a lot of that is, you know, due to people's the poor health and poor nutritional strategies and obviously obesity and all those things. Okay, so, so poor sleep fundamentally is, you know, is defined as quality of sleep, okay, not quantity of sleep. Right. Right. So, so your body repairs during deep sleep, your brain recharges during REM sleep, right? So for me, poor quality of sleep is not getting equal amounts of distribution of both of those two sleep cycles. So your body's not able to decrease its heart rate. So you're, you're staying elevated, you're sweating because your body's detoxifying. So sleep is basically like this, like a, like a cell phone. We need to respect the time we spend in bed and do more with the time we spend in bed. Because if your cell phone, you keep all your apps on on your phone, you need to recharge it more. If not, it will die. You're the same way, but you don't die. You just internalize chronic disease over a lifetime. So yeah. you can only go arguably you know, a few weeks without sleep, but a lifetime being sleep deprived. And that internalizes in your system in a very, very, very specific way. It elevates your sympathetic dominance and suppresses your parasympathetic dominance. So your cortisol levels increase. When your cortisol levels increase and you don't know how to manage that through your heart, then what ends up happening is leptin, you know, dysregulation happens. And then right. you're going to, you know, crave carbohydrates. You're going to be worn down. You know, most people, when they wake up in the morning, let's say you have the choice to sleep in, you have a choice. You either put yourself back to sleep or you wake up and you get ready for the day. Most people are going to wake up and get ready for the day because they don't respect their time enough in bed as quality effective times because we think of lying, think about lying down in one position for eight hours. It's a waste of time unless you are doing something to make sure that you're recharging. So the other day I woke up, I knew I was run down. So I said, you know what? Screw it. I have to stay in bed an extra hour. Yeah. So I forced myself back to sleep, knowing that it would get more performance during the day if I did that. I had so much yeah. shit going on that I, I, I wanted that I, everything wanted to get up and start stop my day, but I made that choice, and now I have the energy because I only got that extra hour of sleep. So the dysfunction to me with sleep and how it affects your life starts between the ears because we yeah. don't respect the time we spend in bed and we don't know how to get way better sleep awakening the full potential of a well-rested aligned you that's really our essence okay. i love that how did you go back to sleep how do you force your body to go back to sleep for one more hour what are the strategies on that so within within our programs this is what we do we we give people techniques so you have to understand how the brain works and how the brain sleeps so the brain does not sleep by thinking it right. sleeps by processing memories so you have to Force, and I call it a sleep memory. You can either do it now, but it needs to be a rhythmic memory. If you're a golfer, believe it or not, I'm trying to come down. I just joined a country club, okay? So I, uh, so what I did is, is I take my mental attitude and I took every step, first hole, shot, 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 second hole, and I walked myself through the 18 holes of every shot, gone. And once you put yourself to sleep on that memory once, you'll put yourself to sleep on that memory over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. So if you wake up in the morning, you go right back to the memory that you put yourself to sleep on and then you can force yourself back to sleep. That's very cool. I mean, you know, like I said, you have sleep programs that you teach people, but you know, most people, they have to go somewhere, they have to be somewhere, they got to clock in, clock out, you know, the, 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 it's the time frame thing where it's like, oh, I'd love to sleep another hour, but I just can't. And so then they force themselves to get up and then like you said, then their day is still ineffective because they don't have the right energy. Um, I am able to do that myself too. Um, and, you know, we have blacked out, my room is completely blacked out. 
So, you know, if my daughters, if some, if it's, you know, the dogs wake up, whatever it is, and you know, we have to do, I, I have ways to get back to sleep too, but I'm the same way. Uh, what, what are your thoughts though on naps? So if you like, for instance, if you nap with intention and that's, it's all about teaching people, we can even do a four week sleep challenge for your entire group, you know, and we personalize those because it's all about napping. It's about then taking the next level and the next level. Napping. I'd love to do that, by the way. Okay. Definitely do that. I can help do that. that. So, um, so napping is like this. It is, needs to be done consciously. Right. So for instance, I will nap when I'm going to actually nap today. Uh, awesome. But I will nap tomorrow, which is Wednesday. I build yeah. that time in because I know Tuesday night, I'm not going to sleep well. Try it. Yeah. So I have a nap built in on Wednesday. I give myself in the important thing about a nap is, you know, if you have to nap all the time that you're just screwing your life up. Yeah, so, absolutely. So it, it, you should be able to get good quality sleep, but understand there are going to be times where you go out with friends or you have, you know, if I, I, I still have a couple of drinks, if I, if I'm, you know, whatever, whatever it may be, but there are certain things that are going to destroy your quality of sleep and you can't really make it up on the next night. Like he, nobody's going to go to sleep an hour earlier and be like, oh right. my God, everything's going to be beautiful because your body is, you know, that you're living in la la land of rainbows and unicorns. Your body is in this whole circadian rhythm that it's tied into. So when you get thrown off of that, that is when you can put in a 26 minute nap, which arguably is so stupid when I heard that number. And because like when, when people think 26 minute nap, which is, I don't, I can't remember like the world health organization's nap. Perfect nap. Oh God! Anything that comes from the W. Yeah, or whoever it is. Like, where that? App, where the fuck does that come from? Seriously, I'm so sorry. You, you, these people don't think. There's this 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 researcher, you know, sitting down, with looking at somebody. Oh, hey, right. You know, it, it's so stupid because when you look at it, how long does it take for that person to take a nap within the middle of the day? If they're right up. Right destroyed you're killing it yeah exactly so you know you i tell people my, my i tell my clients if you have an hour 45 minutes set the alarm clock to wake you up and then you have to be out a right it's just not laying there resting right That's exactly a waste of time right well i was gonna ask you because see okay so for me if i sleep longer than 20 minutes i get because I, you know, my sleep, I, I get into that, that polyphasic or that deep restorative sleep so fast. I don't like that. So like I prefer 15 minute naps because then I feel refreshed. Right. Is it 15 minutes of time in bed or is it 15 minutes of you actually sleeping for 15 minutes? Oh, I would say it's 15 minutes of actually sleep. So I'm one of those people, okay, that's, my head hits the fucking pillow. I'm out. Yeah. Perfect. That's important to know. And you do like, I don't set an alarm anymore. Right. But you do with what your body's, what your body. So here, you do, if you are, if you didn't get good deep sleep and your body needs it, it's going to go through a full cycle. Cyclical cycle is about four or five minutes, right? Right. You know, right. dropping in, coming back out. Your body will shorten that if it's, if it's used to a nap schedule. But my nap schedule is typically about 40 minutes because I, it's sometimes because of, just my brain, it's tough to shut it down. So it takes me about 15, 20 minutes to shut sure. down my brain. Then I'm out for about 25 minutes. That's the way I used to be until I really, you know, started working in meditation and introspection and contemplation. But um, it's interesting because I, I like, I would prefer to sleep longer, right? But if, and, and I can based on schedules and in, being intentional, but dude, I'm telling you, man, when I sleep like 25 I should say 20 to 30 minutes. I just wake up like I'm wiped out, groggy as hell. But that's okay. I don't get it. You know, it's so it, 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 if you're doing that, that's not normal. Let me put it right. Way. Right. When I get up out of a nap, whether it's 30 minutes or whether it's an hour, I'm up, I'm ready. If right. you are groggy, there, there's, uh, there's other stuff on the, on the front end of that that made your body need that time. Sure. And, sure. and and then the, that needs to be unpacked and a little bit, but that's, that's kind of, you know, well, I had, I had resting. I mean, it's fixed now, but you know, I did a whole supplement deal for about four months, but my cortisol was a little bit higher, you know, it was too high. And so we did some stuff. I did a, 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 a what do you call it? A sleep study and um, you know, microbiome analysis and all that stuff. And I had um, 
and H priori, but who does it? <laughs> but, you know, well, but I had elevated cortisol. Oh, you, you, you're sympathetic. You're parasympathetic inhibited due to your sympathetic dominance because of yeah. your state in your translation or your head to the right side coming from an old right ankle sprain. Anyways, that's coming. Dude, that's pretty insane that you know that because I have Look severe. I mean, that's you just. I mean, you're obviously a a, 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 a in, in addition, you you have magic, white magic. But yes, right ankle is spring. Got massive amounts of debris still floating in there from playing basketball and having multiple ankle sprains to that ankle. That's incredible that you know that. So I, I did want to ask you then about alignment when you lay down. Like, do you guys teach people a specific way to lay down? Yeah, this this stream, yeah, this is on a video, right? So yeah, this last stream time I did video. this on a podcast, I blew out the, uh, I, I blew out my, let me, I got to touch so I don't shock anything. All right. All right. Perfect. All right, here we go. Right, so right now, this is a neck nest, all right? So remember, yep. if you support anything, you're going to make whatever you support weaker. And if you support something over the entire eight night period, of time, eight hour period yeah. of time, you're going to make it weaker. So you don't want a cervical neck support without some sort of stress. And we use the head off of the back of a, the neck nest to cause distraction to the cervical spine. Distraction is a force. A forces causes change. Okay. So what Got I'm it. going to show you. So, so that's the neck nest right there. That's the neck nest. Yeah. So yeah. what we do with the neck nest is we take it. I, we put it on its angle and then we take it and we put it under my neck so that my head is about a half an inch off of the bed. So the head's not supported, the neck is, and there's also distraction happening within the neck nest. So that weight of the head off of the back like a slinky gently stretches a curve back into the neck. That's amazing. So, so that's that's what you use. You don't use any other pillows. You use that neck mess. Zero. Done. Yeah. Dude, you got me, man. How do I get the neck mess? All right, well, hold on. Probably probably already on switch. Yeah, we're going to hook it up. So <laughs> what you and I are going to do is we are going to launch some sort of four-week sleep challenge. Yes. So we'll get you on a neck mess. You're going to have to break it in. It's a very specific. That seemed easy. That's simplicity on the far side. Of yeah, 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 yeah. And then because the positioning is unsafe typically for that human body because your head's going to be in a, a place in your case because your neurology is going to be too far backwards it's going to, you're going to feel you're going to wake up you're going to feel like you're falling backwards there are going to be some specific things so we sleep you slightly elevated at the beginning but we'll go over all of that stuff when we kind of dive into this 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 stuff that's awesome so does your wife use the neck nest too yes yeah Okay, so my wife will want one too then. So, all right, cool. Um, bro, I don't even know what else to say. This has been a profound podcast, uh, especially for a Tuesday. Let me put, throw up your um, your IG handles. So you can be found at obviously Dr. Sleepright and then of course, Facebook, whatever that is. At this point. <laughs> Dr. Sleepright on Facebook. I Dude, every time I try to go into Facebook, I get the like hammer where it's like, please prove that you are Jay Campbell. I'm like, oh my God, get me out of here. But at least, at least IG works. I don't know. Well, Adam, you could go to TikTok too. I think I'm on that. Okay, so then necknest.com, but- um, Dr. For all Sleepright guys, too is the- um, is so neck nest is the is the product site right that's this guy yeah yeah, yeah. all of the education lives on dr sleep right so we we launched in the industry because of my friend dr mercola with neck nest but now what we're doing is is we're we're trying to lead with education and then be a neck nest just like a solution you know but but not you know it, it's basically an end product really the understanding of how to sleep why we sleep and how to get way better sleep really we want to start with and then the neck nest is uh, once you get that then the why is big enough then you'll because using a neck nest it's not the most comfortable thing in the world at the beginning because we're trying to buy a pillow that's more comfortable to really destroy more of our structure you need to buy a pillow that's more functional then the function becomes comfort because you're able to change down the road so really i love that function. Yeah, no, that's actually amazing. I mean, truthfully, I've been looking for like a really optimized pillow forever. I mean, gone through so many. I don't know how much money I've spent, both my wife and I, on specific pillows. So you are uh, the perfect, you came at the perfect time and the perfect place.
So thank you so much. Uh, so for ladies and gentlemen, of course, as always, support the amazing people that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Uh, Dr. Martone is definitely uh, a very unique character, and I'm very grateful that he came on here today. Go to uh, his website, which is necknest.com, or also you find him on IG at Dr. Sleepright, and of course, again, Facebook at Dr. Sleepright. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. 